Dear all, welcome to this new tutorial. In this video, you will see everything you need to start using Reaper in just 13 short minutes. Reaper is a complete multi-track digital audio workstation or DAW, a great product to manage, edit, and combine samples, recordings, and MIDI compositions in one place. It is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and can also be tested for free for 60 days before needing a proper license. As you open Reaper, its main interface shows up with the Timeline or Arrangement window on top and the mixer at the bottom. The Timeline is the place where you manage and edit audio files through time, measured in bars and beats on top and in seconds at the bottom. This interface can be changed in colors and style by going to Options, Themes. In this video, we will stick to the default one. To import samples, just drag and drop these files on the timeline. You can import videos as well and check their frames from View Video. All these files are shown as blocks called items with their name and sound waveforms for each stereo channel, representing how their volume changes in time. They are collected within rows called tracks that can be extended with your mouse wheel while holding down the control or command key. To check your items, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out on the green playhead position and hold down the Alt or Option key as well to scroll in time. Before making recordings with Reaper, you have to set the input sources by going to Options, Preferences. If you click on Device, you can set the audio system or driver, such as WaveOut for the default audio settings, or ASIO if you want to use a professional driver that reduces latency and lags. Below. Select the input device, such as your microphone or any external instrument you want to connect, and the output device, in this case the default audio speakers. At this point, you can right-click on the left to insert a new track and click on Record Arm to enable the track for recording. Check if the microphone works. If not, make sure that the input source is selected. You can keep record monitoring on to listen to the microphone input directly. Pay attention that this causes resonance in case input and output sources are too much close by. When you are ready, click on the timeline to set the starting point and use the record button to start and stop recording. To put the timeline in playback, use the player on the left. You can also press the spacebar key to play and stop and the enter key to play and pause. Whereas to play back a defined portion in loop, just click and drag above the timeline to create a loop region and enable toggle repeat. On the right, you get all the project settings. Set the project tempo in BPM beats per minute, converting your beats in seconds, and adjusting the playback rate. Define the time signature, such as the number of beats per bar, and use the rate knob to force a different playback rate. In addition, click on the I button for other advanced settings, such as sample rate and recording options. Now let's see how to edit each item. Click and drag any to move it in time or in another track. This gets snapped to the timeline grid, defined on Options, Snap Grid, unless you move while holding down the Shift key. For more precise movements, press the N key and use the Nudge dialog box. Click and drag the item edges to adjust its length. This cuts part of its content when shortened or puts it in loop when extended every time you see gray markers on it. Moreover, 
If you drag the edges while holding down the Alt or the Option key, you can adjust the time length by changing its speed rate instead. If the item gets shorter, it is also played faster, vice versa, slower. In addition, you can pull down the top line to adjust the item volume and drag from its corners to add fade transitions that change the volume in time smoothly. This transition is also applied in case two items overlap in time within the same track. To cut, copy, and paste any item, click on it to select it and press Ctrl or Command and X, C, and V. Cut items to remove these quickly and perform fast copies by moving any while holding down the control or command key. If you make any mistake, use control or command and Z to undo or go backwards with the history panel on top. To split any selected item, place the playhead and use the S key. Whereas to check all the item properties, just double click on it. You can select multiple clips by clicking on these while holding down the control or command key. This is very useful to move and edit these together. Whereas to manage all the items inside each track, you get several options on the left side and at the bottom on the mixer panel. Enable the M button to mute the current track and the S button to solo it and mute all the others. Make sure to check the volume level with the decibel meter in order to avoid any distortion coming from red levels of saturation. You can adjust the whole track volume with the main bar and balance the left and the right stereo channels with the panning knob above. If you apply these corrections to the master track, the whole audio output gets affected. With route, you can set audio routing by specifying SINs and receivers. We won't see these in this beginner tutorial. Whereas to add, remove, or duplicate any track, just right-click on it. To add professional effects, click on the FX button. This list includes VST and JS Jesusonic plugins that use an EEL2 language to edit sound. You can even create your own effect by coding with this script. Check our video description to learn more. Apply reverb, saturation, pitch, delays, and filters with EQ. These effects affect the whole track and can be adjusted with their interface. On the left, click on the check mark to disable and enable any effect and click and drag any to change the order. Click on Remove to delete the selected effect from the list. You can also disable all the effects applied to any track with the I.O. button next to FX. In addition, you can click on Trim to enable several envelopes that can be used to change the track or effect properties in time. These are shown as secondary tracks with an envelope line that you can pull up and down in value and edit in shape by holding down the control or command key as you brush on it. Whereas click with the Alt or the Option key over any point to remove it instead. To disable and hide any envelope, click on Bypass on the left. Now let's see how to manage MIDI files. These are compositions with notes that become audible when you attach any instrument. You can connect any external hardware by going to Options, Preferences, and then to MIDI devices. Otherwise, you can simply attach any virtual synthesizer or synth within Reaper itself. In this video, we will use synths only. Drag and drop any MIDI file to import it. Reaper may show options to extract all its tracks inside or change the project tempo to match the MIDI tempo. Then select again if you want to extract all MIDI tracks and get your MIDI item on the timeline. 
At this point, you must assign any instrument to each track collecting MIDI files. Click on FX and then on Instruments. Choose Reasynth to add a melodious synth or Reasynth Drums to add percussions and drums. You can manage and edit these synths-like effects, with the difference that they act on MIDI items and ignore the rest of the track samples. If you prefer to make new compositions, right-click on the left and go to Insert Virtual Instrument to create a new track with a ready synth to use. At this point, click elsewhere to deselect any item and then hold down the Control or Command key and click and drag to drop a new vacant MIDI item. You can compose within it with the E key or use the main piano roll by double-clicking on it. Click on the piano on the left to test the synth notes or percussions and click and drag on the piano roll to drop notes with the correct length. You can manage these notes just like the items. Click and drag these to move in time and pitch, drag their edges to adjust their length, and pull down the line from the top to adjust volume or velocity. Use Ctrl or Command and X to cut and remove any note. Make sure to make a loop playback to check your modifications live. At the bottom, adjust the note properties, like velocity or pitch. Hold down the Control or Command key and draw an envelope that you can adjust on each single point. Whereas, use the Alt or Options key to remove points instead. To save your Reaper project, go to File, Save Project As. These RPP files store your entire timeline content and options so that you can modify these later anytime. Whereas, go to File, Render to export your project as an audio file. Select Master Mix to take the whole master track output and select what to export with bounds, such as the entire project the current loop region as time selection, or a precise time range. Below, set directory, file name, sample rate, and stereo channels. Select the proper file format, including WAV, FLAC, and MP3 to export audio, and GIF, AVI, FLV, and MP4 when rendering videos, with full control on bit rate, frame size, and rate. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Make sure to subscribe and visit our channel for more free and outstanding content.